Today, I am going to explain a Chinese monster movie called Million Dollar Crocodile. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. 10-year-old Xiao Xing likes to wander around in an abandoned zoo every day after school. He is best friends with a 36-foot-long female crocodile named Ameo. For the past few months, the zoo has been in shambles because of the lack of funds. Hence, Xiao Xing frequently feeds Ameo through the cells. One afternoon, he is hanging by the crocodile pool when his test paper is blown into the cell. Xiao Xing carefully goes in to retrieve it and notices Ameo inside a cave. He holds out a piece of sausage to the animal, but is interrupted when the zoo owner, Liu, arrives. He immediately brings the kid out and scolds him for putting his life in danger. While he is at it, a group of rowdy restaurant workers arrives at the zoo. Since Liu can no longer take care of the crocodiles, he has agreed to sell them to a local restaurant. Liu loves his animals dearly, but the situation doesn't allow him to hold on to them any longer. The buyers easily capture the small ones, but Ameo gives them a hard time by refusing to come out of her cave. The animal only trusts Liu, so he uses a stick to call her outside. She is immediately sedated and taken away in a vehicle. Then, we are introduced to a young woman named Yan. She has recently returned from a foreign country after earning a lot of money. In fact, she has a bag made of crocodile leather that is filled with one million dollars. On the way to the city with her boyfriend, Yan gets into an argument with him. As a result, he strands her in the middle of the highway. Meanwhile, the buyers bring the crocodiles to a local restaurant owned by a gangster named Zhao. He plans to slaughter the animals to sell their meat to foreigners at an outrageous price. The expert cook takes the responsibility to slaughter the crocs. He doesn't have problems killing the smaller ones, who are still unconscious because of the tranquilizer. But when he gets to Ameo, she suddenly wakes up and attacks. The ropes she is tied to are not strong enough to restrain her. She breaks them in seconds and leaps towards the people who were trying to kill her. While struggling, she accidentally breaks a roof with her tail, which causes the cook to end up inside the pool where the other crocodiles are kept. They violently get on top of him, eventually devouring his body. While the workers are distracted, Ameo breaks out of a gate and escapes. Zhao panics and blames his employees for being careless. He orders them to keep the escape a secret since they do not want to be convicted for malpractice. At Xiao Xing's home, his father Bei Ji, who is a policeman, is mad at him for losing his test papers. Xiao Xing tells him what happened to it, but Bei Ji thinks the kid is just making up a story to hide that he didn't get good results. A while later, he leaves for work, asking Xiao Xing to stay home because he is grounded. Meanwhile, Yan has been walking on the highway for an hour, cursing her boyfriend. She holds her bag close, relieved that she at least has the money. She decides to walk through a tea farm, which is a shorter way to the bus station. However, she soon regrets her decision as a 36-foot-long giant crocodile blocks her way. She freaks out and climbs on a pole to save her life. When the animal doesn't move, she hits it with the bag to try to send it away. But she yet again regrets her decision when Ameo eats the bag as a whole. It walks away right after, leaving Yan in shock. She realizes that the bag is worth more than her life and runs around looking for the animal. After not finding it, she asks a couple for the way to the police station. In Xiaoxing's home, he is passing time instead of studying. His friends call him outside for a trip to a nearby lake. A mischievous Xiao Xing assumes he can return home before his father and joins them. At the police station, Yan tells Bei Ji about her bag that had her phone and a million dollars, which are now inside a massive crocodile's stomach. The story is so absurd that he thinks she is trying to prank him. But when Yan repeatedly insists that she is telling the truth, Bei Ji asks her to prove the existence of a giant crocodile. She takes him to the tea farm and reenacts what happened. They also meet the couple from earlier, who claim they haven't seen any animals around the area. Yan still insists that she is telling the truth, which only makes the others think she's suffering from a mental disorder that is making her delusional. Beiji is now sure that she is trying to mess with him. He walks away, but Yan doesn't stop following him. She inquires if there are places in the town that hold crocodiles, which reminds Beiji of the zoo. Seeing that she is desperate, he decides to give her a last chance and takes her to the zoo. But it has already been closed, permanently. 
Beiji calls Liu to find out that the restaurant owner, Zhao, owns all the crocodiles. After that, Beiji calls Zhao, who makes his minion lie that all the crocodiles are confined. To Beiji, this confirms that Yan has been bluffing. He asks her to go back to her city and drives away. In the lake, Xiao Xing and his friends are having the time of their lives, unaware that Ameo is swimming in the same waters. A renowned alcoholic sees the animal and warns the kids about it, but they think he is joking. A distraught Yan is walking down the street when Beiji approaches her again. He makes her call her phone, and the call still goes through. This further proves that the crocodile didn't eat her phone. Beiji stops a bus and urges her to go back to her city. Yan retaliates and cries about her million dollars, making him forcefully get her inside the bus and send her away. Still, Yan is not someone who gives up that easily. She jumps out of the window of the moving bus and follows Beiji again. A man comes to him complaining about his missing goat. Beiji goes to the lake where it was last seen to investigate. Yan notices blood spreading on the surface of the water. When Beiji jumps inside, he finds the goat's decapitated head. This makes him realize that Yan might have been telling the truth. His home is also near the pond, which means there is a possibility the crocodile might attack his son. He immediately rushes home to see a naked Xiao Sheng playing outside. He hugs his son tightly, grateful that he is safe. Yan also arrives, having followed Beiji. She stays at their home with Xiao Xing, so Beiji can go out and investigate the case further. When it gets dark, Xiao Xing cooks noodles for both of them, unaware that Ameo is right outside the house. Meanwhile, Beiji makes a stop at Xiao's restaurant, and the broken gates make it clear that they are the reason the crocodile escaped. He teaches them a lesson for lying, and urges them to file an official complaint about the missing animal. After that, he calls the zookeeper, Liu, and tells him everything. Since Ameo is a female crocodile, Liu thinks she must be somewhere near the waters where she can lay eggs. Beiji registers his home is in the middle of the only two water bodies in the town. He hurriedly rushes home to make sure his son is safe. In the meantime, Ameo enters the house and is climbing up the stairs when Xiaoxing sees her. He recognizes her as his friend, but Yan panics. She tries to protect herself with a knife, but it only triggers the otherwise calm crocodile. She attacks them and wreaks havoc in the house. Xiaoxing and Yan hide inside a locked room, but Ameo breaks in through the wall. As a last resort, they climb up the roof through the window. Xiaoxing is safely up, but Yan has trouble following him. She is seconds away from being attacked by the crocodile when Beiji arrives and hits it with his bike. Ameo falls to the ground and runs away, leaving the house in a mess. By now, the entire town has been warned about the dangerous animal walking among them. Soldiers are appointed to capture her, and the matter turns into national news. In the following scene, everyone is in the police station. When Zhao is alone, Yan asks him how fast a crocodile can digest the food it eats. Zhao knows nothing about the animal's anatomy, but still, he confidently claims that they can digest anything within hours of eating it. As they talk, he finds out Ameo has a million dollars inside her stomach. Driven by greed, he makes it his mission to get the bag before anyone else finds the crocodile. He and his minions drive towards the lake to hunt it, but are stopped by police on the way. They are blocking the road to ensure the animal does no harm. Hence, in turn, the group takes a shorter way to the lake that runs through the woods. In the police station, Yan hugs Beiji from behind, begging him to catch the crocodile soon. However, Beiji realizes she is doing it to steal his gun. He warns her to never try anything like that again if she doesn't want to spend the night in jail. The next morning, the military and the police get ready to go on a search mission. Liu also joins Beiji, since he is the only person who can control the animal. Yan is eager to go on a search to ensure she will be the first one to get her hands on her money. However, since she doesn't know the way to the mountains, she tricks Xiao Xing into helping her. While in the woods, they bump into Zhao and his minions and follow them. The group eventually finds a footprint near a lake. They need bait to bring the animal out, so Zhao uses Yan and Xiao Xing as bait. They are hung upside down by the lake. Ameo sees them and recognizes Xiao Xing as the kind kid who always fed her. Hence, she doesn't attack the two. 
One of Zhao's minions tries to hit her with a dart, which triggers her yet again. She runs back into the water and drags Zhao behind because he is stuck in a fishing net. Beiji and Liu arrive at the scene and see that Zhao has somehow survived without any injury. Right then, Ameo jumps on him and devours his body. Xiao Xing, Yan, and Liu follow the crocodile, trying to control her. Yan fires a shot at her, which makes her violent. She smacks the car and runs away to the field. They lose her on the tea farm, but we see her re-entering the lake from the other side of the road. The police start clearing the area and alerting people about the animal. Yan suggests the police use her phone's GPS system to track Emeo. The police work on getting the data and eventually find out the location. Beiji and Liu set off to look for her, since only Liu can control her. They see her in the shallow part of the lake and bring her to the bank in no time. Liu is doing a great job keeping her calm. That is, until one of Zhao's minions attacks Ameo for killing his boss. She loses her temper again and starts attacking everyone in sight. Liu tries his best to calm her down, but she in turn attacks him as well. As a last resort, Beiji shoots her in the head, which ends her life. At last, we see Ameo looking at Liu's dead body with teary eyes. She never wanted to kill anyone, let alone her keeper, but she did what she had to do to keep herself safe. In the last scene, we see Yan counting the bills she got from Ameo's body. They are mostly destroyed, but she doesn't want to give up on them. Somewhere else by the lake, Ameo's eggs hatch, giving birth to her offspring. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you.